So this is the portion Lech Lecha, and uh, we'll talk about this for a minute, just for a minute. We'll be done in like uh, at least four minutes. So, so, um, so, <laughs> so um, let's see here. Genesis 12, 1, and uh, let's, let's jump for a second uh, to, to talk about the name of this portion, Lech Lecha. I mean, who's, give, me some, give me some names for this. Tell me what people think this is, okay? What's it say? What? Go for it. Go for it. Okay, I'm going to write that one. Okay. Get yourself out. Yeah, get out. What was that? Get yourself out. Get yourself out. Go for yourself. Go to yourself. <laughs> Go for yourself. <laughs> I heard that one. To you. To you. yourself. And what was that, Aaron? You said to you, to you. To you, to you. Which is... Uh, four. It can be four. Okay, interesting how we have this many things of two words, the same word, right? And uh, we happen to know that this is a, the lamed is a shepherd's staff, and the kaf is the palm of a hand. Okay? And uh, it's pretty interesting when you just look at that. What does that bring to mind for you? A shepherd, a shepherd right? Mm -hmm. right? Say so grabbing a staff, right? I mean, you know, it's it's it's. Let's see here if I got. I want to see what the. Um, when I go to the ancient Hebrew and I start looking her up, and uh, we're just going to have to be all over the place in this teaching. It's just the way that it goes, you know. So. Um, you know, the, uh, the root of the word is, is lak, you know, right? Just lama kaf, right? And the action is walk, okay? So we'll just make some arrows and do this stuff. I'm probably not going to get to this other stuff, so. Um, walk is the action. What is the concrete on this one? Uh, if I remember right, yes, message. Which <coughs> Now, that makes it seem just a little bit different, doesn't it? You know, I mean, it's like, um, at first it looks like, all right, just a shepherd's staff walking. Uh, but tell me something, is that staff something that is important? Yes. Right? I mean. Yeah, it's, it supports life. Exactly. It protects, it defends, it, uh, it guides, it, uh, it supports um, you know, I mean, all of those things. Think about being a shepherd and what it would be like if you didn't have one. You know, I mean, you'd have a tough job, you know. So, um, and uh, so it's interesting that the, the central theme of the word is actually a message. You know, it's, it's a, a, that's the concrete of the word. That's the idea of everything that, that this talks about has to do with a message. Now, the interesting about interesting thing about Hebrew, and this happens many times when they have two words right after each other, lech, lech, mut, mut, all these, they're, they literally can be mirrored, meaning that they look at each other and that they, that they reflect each other. And so that's how they get this concept <coughs> of to you, for you, uh, go for yourself, go to yourself, and things like that. It's, uh, it's, it's, but it's, it's interesting. So I'm going to read a little stuff here really quickly, and then uh, we'll get into some more of this stuff here. Um, so we all know that, uh, um, that this was Abram, right? You know, Abram, that, was, that the Lord was talking to. And he says, Get thee, in 12, one, get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. Right? That's, that's what he tells him. And he says, and then he goes on to tell him how I'll make a great nation out of him and everything. Doesn't tell him where or anything. Doesn't tell him who. Doesn't say, by the way, you know, so 
And, you know, that's just the start of this. But this is, this is Avram that we're speaking of, not Avraham, right? You know, so he still hasn't even received that name yet. But so at the time Avram received the commandment from, the God, to, from God to go out, we, we see represent only his own striving to approach God at that time. It's God's not like directing yet. This is when God starts directing in his life. So the command, lech lecha, go out, and then of course ha'aretz, you know, the uh, ha'aretz, to, to your land, began a new and deeper relationship with Avram and his maker at this time. And do we all agree that the teachings are about us today? And if we're reading this right now, it means that there's something in there we should be paying attention to in our life right now, yes. you know, that there's something going on. So... Um, when a person fills a divine command, God tells you to go do something, you know, it's probably good for you to go do it. It's probably a good idea, right? I mean, we don't always, though. Plenty of times we'll hear God and we're like, no, um, uh, that sounds way too scary, right? So, which, uh, you know, right? <laughs> so, um, but when a person fulfills a divine command because he has been commanded to do so, the act connects him to God and all of God's greatness. It's when we choose to align ourselves with him, then we basically have his power at our hands, you know, because we're like, yeah, God, I'm going to do your work here. I'm not going to do mine. I'm going to do yours. So it's like a di divine assignment. You know, Abram was commanded to travel beyond his limited frame of reference and establish an unlimited connection with God. He, I mean, by doing so, he defined um, a constantly growing, flowering nature between him and God by by saying that he was going to go ahead and do this. You know, um, think. You know, I mean, what it would be like if God gave you a command uh, to do something and, and you chose not to. You would be basically walking away from a blessing. You know, you'd be basically saying, yeah, I got it, God. I'm good. You know, let me handle this. And how many of us have seen how that's gone in our lives? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, um, our connection to God isn't only dependent upon our love our understanding or our belief, but it, it comes as a response to his initiative because it's God that not only directed Avram here, but who has called every one of us to do whatever he has wanted in our lives and for him. You know, we would not be sitting here right now if God hadn't called you and said, hey, and get up, get to yourself you know, and get going. And so I think this is really, really important. So real spiritual progress requires that one leaves their current state that they're in behind and is ready to move into a new state, you know, ready to move into blessings with God. And, and it's, oh man, I'll tell you, I, uh, when I read this portion so many times, I think, how many, how many times I've missed opportunities that God has given me to walk out in blessings because I was afraid of what was in front of me. Because I thought somehow my powers and my, myself was going to get it done. You know? So we got to think about this. Doing this is about self-discovery. It's about knowing the intimate relationship we, we have with God and growing that into something that is beautiful. So, um, the uh, lech lecha um, is, uh, it's usually translated as get thee out from your country and your birthplace and your father's house. Uh, the understanding of, uh, of lech lecha is to go for yourself. Um, and that's, that's literally an, an internal thing. Throughout the ages, the people of Israel have, have interpreted as go to yourself. And that, again, is that mirroring of that term as you see that when you, when you read it. It's uh, it, both of them looking at each other. So 
The reason is said is that you have to look within yourself to begin walking out in a journey, right? Got to got to look at it. Um, uh, literally, it means something like walk for yourself, you know, because of the luck term and the message that you're going to and everything. The interesting thing about this is that this message may very well be to yourself. This message that the term is talking about may very well be understanding yourself better so that you can be in line with what God wants you to do. And how many of us have a hard time looking at our faults? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, and uh, I've been known to get upset. And don't be pointing out my faults. You know, I'm, uh, can't we talk about something better? You know, and stuff like that. Um, but. What is literally better than recognizing where you fall short so that you can grow and become better than, than you are? I mean, it's, it's not easy. But, but think about this. How old was, was Avram when this happened? What, 75, I believe? Something like that. I think uh, I'll have to read through that in a minute. What do you think it felt like for him? And, you know, that had to be an interesting, an interesting thing, right? So... So go to yourself, meaning towards your soul's purpose and your ultimate purpose, that for which you were created. And do you know every one of us, God created and knew that purpose beforehand? And as we go through life, and I've been talking a lot about this lately as I've been teaching about uh, uh, the term, there's a book out there called Shattered Dreams. And it's about when, when your dreams are shattered in your life, what do we do? We normally turn to God. We're like, God, I can't do this. What's going on? Why am I in this? We might get upset. We might be mad. I've told God I'm upset with him. Why are you doing this to me? It's taken me through many, many things like this to happen to realize that the reason he does that is because otherwise I start looking at myself just wanting, thinking I got it, and then I'm doing it, and then I can handle it. He says, no, wait a minute. Now, when I knocked you down a bit, and you, you see that everything fell out from underneath you, you turn back to me right away, and you want to hold my hand, and you want to walk with me. He says, what is a better thing than that? What is a better thing than having God on your side? So as we go to ourselves, we need to look at where we have pride, where we have uh, self-efficiency, uh, where we have uh, I can do it. You know? yeah. Yeah. it it's, that can be a good thing in our lives if we're doing God's work and we're listening to what God wants in our life, to being confident about doing his word. There's plenty of examples of that in the Bible. But if it becomes a prideful thing, believe me, we're not walking the right direction. You know? So... So, um, he says, you know, go to yourself uh, towards the ultimate purpose which he has created him for. God commanded Abraham to go from his country, his place of birth, his father's house. These places are not just geographical, but they're also psychological. They're also things that are deeply embedded in us, you know, of what we're doing, our home, our name. thing. They represent lineage. God wanted Avram to be outside of worldly influence, all that that was going on around him. How many of you let the world around you affect what you think? I do. I do. I, I'm, I'm like, and it's so difficult for me not to. It's so difficult for me to calm that chaos down so that I can hear that still small voice, so that I can know, no, this is what you're saying. If I don't intently listen, if I don't get into his word, read it out, search it out, and then pray about how it is supposed to line up with my life, I don't hear well enough, and I go about my own ways. You know, so I really believe this is what he's telling us in this part is, let us turn inside, listen, get the noise quiet, get on your knees, get to a place where you can communicate with your God, and listen to the purpose he has for you. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, um, Avram had to look to God as a provider th 
through this. He's getting ready to leave everything he knows, all the stuff he's set up his whole life. He's not a youngster. You know, he's had an established life, and he's going to have to go out of this country, out of his home, away from everybody he knows, and guess who he's got to depend on? You know? Yeah. Not to the self-sufficiency that we are so commonly used to. You know, for Abram to go to yourself, it meant for him to see where he had sprung from, where he had purpose, who he had purpose in. Just think of what it must feel like leaving all that you're comfortable with, everything that feels good to you. You Think of what it feels like to have everything done except for God. That's the one thing that is with you that is not changing. That must be, um, what, what do you call, uh, uh, it's where we become driven, where we become, uh, our thoughts are everything that we, right, purpose, yeah, it is, but I mean, a single-minded, focused, right, there we go, is, is when you got God right there and everything else becomes unfamiliar and you're all shaky and stuff except for the one thing that you know. You know, so, you know, Abram goes on a journey. He gets diverted to Egypt. We'll read through some of this, you know. Abraham passing off his wife as his sister, right? right? And we don't have any, you know, our forefathers don't have any issues. You know, so, you know. Abram dividing the land with his nephew Lot. The war between the four kings and the five kings. The covenant statement by tithing. You know, all that's in this portion, you know. Sarai's tension with her maid Hagar and and of course, Hagar's son, Ishmael, you know, and the covenant of the Brit Milah, the circumcision. All of that is in this portion, you know. So first God told Abraham to leave his native land and his father's house for a land that God would show him, promising to make him a great nation, make his name great, bless those who blessed him, and curse those who cursed him. Following God's command at age 75, Abraham took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and the wealth um, and persons that they had acquired in Haran and traveled to the Terebinth of Moreh at Shechem and Canaan. Okay, it's an interesting thing, right? We got, we got this going on. Um, Avram is obedient. He hears God's word. He had to listen to it. I'll bet you he did some serious praying, talking with God and everything. And he's like, all right, I'm going to take Everything I got, mm, we're, we're out of here. I'm hitting the road, going south. And so um, so once he, once he gets there, God appears to Abram and tells him that, uh, that he would assign land to his heirs, and Abram built an altar to him there. Right? Abram then moved to the hill country east of Bethel and built an altar to God there and invoked God by, night, by name. And then after that, you know, he goes on to the Negev. Uh, the first speaks of hearing and obeying, in which Abram walks with the Lord. Um, and I mean, it, literally, if you put yourself in this position, how would you feel if you were 75 years old and God told you to do this? Would you just jump up and do it? Would you be like, oh yeah, no problem, got it? I guarantee you there'd be doubts. There'd be, is this for sure? I mean, is this God's voice speaking? Am I, you know, uh, so. And you're 75 years old. I mean, somewhat established in your ways and your thinking, you know? So, and, uh, so he says he's going to go, and you're 75 year old, and he's going to start, what's the big one here? He's going to start fathering a nation, you know, at this age. I'm like, right, God, okay, I, I got you. So, so what does Abram do? What does he do? Um, would somebody read Genesis 12, 2 through 12, 4? I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Uh, in 12.4? So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. So he says, all right, God. Yeah. And sets out on the road and goes to it, and I um, and I and I just think of myself how I would do if that was going on with me, you know, it's uh, it's interesting. Uh, Abram took Sarah, uh, Sarai, his wife. And I keep doing that because I'm so used to saying Sarah, you know, 
So it's, uh, uh, right? And Lot, his brother, son, and all their substance they had, uh, they gathered. And it says all the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the place of Moreh, and the Canaanite uh, then, and the Canaanite was then there in the land. Okay, so in twelve seven, and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there he builded me an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So, um, and and I mean from there. He went, what, he went from there to a mountain on the east of Bethel, pitched his tent, Bethel on the west, high on the east. Uh, he built an altar, called on the name of the Lord, and Abram journeyed, going on still towards the south. So he's still, you know, moving forward. And it came to pass when he was near to enter into Egypt. Now, you know, where are we? 12, 10? Okay, what's, what's God say there in 12, 10? There's a famine in the land, right? So, so we go about, we're on a trip, we're doing our thing, going the way that God tells us to do, and then God puts something in his path. He's like, and I can tell by the time I'm getting, going to get nowhere close. That's all right. That's the way this is going to go. We'll have a, we can always do more in Midrash after this. But, um, uh, but what's he say? There's a famine in the land, and so Abram went down to Egypt to, you know, to so- sojourn there, to stay there. And uh, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter Egypt. What's he say to his wife? You're very beautiful. Yeah. 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 Right? So, so I pray thee that, you know, you tell him you're my sister, that it may be well for me for my sake, you know, uh, and my soul, he says, shall live because of thee. You know, um, so what, what is this about? Um, first off, we got a famine in the land, and so uh, it seems like a deliberate concealment of God's um, blessing. That it's a, like a, a stopping and moving. But we don't know God's mind. We don't know God's way, and we don't know what kind of things he puts in our lives to turn us from one place to another. So, because he understands the end from the beginning. He knows what's coming. We're just, you know, doubtful people, you know. Um, so he had promised in 12 too that he was going to make his name great he was going to make him a nation and everything um, but Abram had to move on in his personal journey with God to find out what's going on here so Abram walks in obedience but then what happens and this is common to us he has fear he acts in self defense you know um, no longer trusting in God's word, but allows the Yetzirah to whisper into his life, you know, and says, oh, but the, your wife's so beautiful, they're going to take her and they're going to kill you for her. You know, God's sending him on a journey. Is he trusting God this whole time? Or is he getting caught up in his own life, right? So, and we got to look at this for ourselves. What do we do when we go on a journey that's difficult? Do we turn to God when something happens? Or do we turn to our wife and like, wait, wait, no, hang on. You, you need to do this so that I'll be okay, you know? And so, and I'm sure lying is a really good thing to do when you're not doing well. So, right? So, yeah? So, it's just, uh, no, it's not? Uh, this is what God is looking at. This is what God does. He, Abram is walking in obedience, but then has fear, you know. I mean, is there a time in your life where you could hear the whispers slipping in and affecting your choices? Right? I mean, so, you know, we're in good company. But God still has plans for Abram, as he has plans for you, every one of you. Even through listening to the whispers, even through listening you know, to the Nakash. Um, Do you guys really believe, I mean, it's easy to say it, but do you really believe God has plans for you individually? Yeah? Is it, what was that one? Yes. No, I just, I I do. Okay. Well, I thought I heard kind of. No, No, I believe in a very interactive God. That's, perfect though but that's where I'm at I'm like kind of 
yeah, sometimes I really believe he has things for me. Other times I'm like thinking he just wants to kick me in the butt and, you know, that that's why all these things are going on in my life. So I'm, I'm just being honest. Oh, flag keeps messing me. I don't get frustrated that I don't know the plan. Right, right. Okay, and wouldn't all of us like to go, God, just tell me your plan, then I can do this, right? Yeah. And, and, but, but, God is smarter than us. And so that's why he doesn't tell us the plan. What do you think Abram would have felt like if he says, hey, no problem, man, you're going to go down, you're going to go into Egypt, man, they're going to uh, put you in servitude, you're going to be, uh, you know, what the, your nation that you're going to father, they're going to be there 400 years, you know, and stuff. Do you think that would make Abram want to go and do the things that, eh? God knows more than we do. And so he doesn't. He doesn't do that. He's like, no, I'm going to give you what you need to move you forward to where you're going to go. And I want you to listen first, and I want you to be obedient. Okay? And just walk it out. Walk it out. You're going to be okay. You know? So God had plans for Abram here, and so what's he do? Uh, 1215, the princes of the Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house, and he entreated Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. And God still planned blessing Abram, causing him to become who he needed to be as the father of a nation, even though he walked out in fear, did some things out of the flesh, and went about the way he was. So how do we proceed in faith of the word from our Lord? What makes us depart from the path that he has and listen to others? You want to know what makes us do that? Distractions. Distractions make you. You get your focus all messed up. You get your, you get, oh, wait a minute, what was that? And all of a sudden you're walking over here to find out that you were talking about and you've left, left your path behind. You're no longer going the direction that God wants. And then you're wondering, why are things so terrible? What is going on with me? Why is this happening in my life? Little are you paying attention that you're the one that walked away from the path of God in the first place. You know? So God has so much uh, for us to do. But what did uh, Yeshua do um, when someone tries to distract him. Okay. Somebody read Matthew 16, 23. I'm going to see if I can get through at least. I got to the second one. So, you know, so I'm, I'm trying. So. Has somebody got that? But he turned and said to Kepha, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, and you are not seated. Uh, sorry, you are not setting your mind on Elohim's interests, but man's. Check that out, right? This is who? The rock, right? You know, of God that's speaking his words. And, and what does Yeshua say to him? Get behind me. Get behind me. Yeah, no, Hasatan, the Satan, the adversary, the. You know, it's that, that act, that thing. He's like, I'm not about to be distracted by the adversary's voice speaking into my life. I am going to keep my focus on God's word, which is why you are absolutely right. What does he respond with? He responds with God's word always, yeah. always. How good would we be at getting away from distractions if we could respond with God's word every time? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you, you have to know it. You have to read it. It has to be there. It has to be read, ready to be given, right? You know, it has to be a message for you and the people that you are facing. That is the walking out of this. That is the part that is necessary because otherwise you're going to get distracted and you're going to walk away and you're not going to pay attention to where you were. And <clears throat> so another thing is required uh, for this. I'm seeing if I can do this. Um, 
Can you imagine taking a journey of this nature without faith? I mean, what, what would it take to walk out this kind of life, go to the places that God has told him to go, and not have faith that God would actually do what he said? I mean, you're doomed before you start, right? So what does that say that we need? Does it, it says we got to listen, right? We got to hear his word. We got to go, okay, I got you. And then we have to obey. We actually have to walk that forward, right? We got we to gotta take those steps. We got to go forward. But then we got to have that faith, that emunah. Um, the journey of finding one's purpose in God is to break us free of our limitations. Amen. God doesn't have the limitations. We do. It's to break us free. God puts us in these journeys so that we can see how great he can be and just how, believe it or not, easy it is if we follow his directives to break free of those things. Well, we just get, we get so caught up in the world. We get so caught up in our, I'm talking our lives, everything that's happening every day. And, you know, it's, man. We are not alone. What Abraham and Sarah taught us is that each of us has a direct and intimate relationship with our Father. Every one of us. Every one of us, man. Alone, we are limited. And we are just, you know, uh, don't have what it takes. Connected to God and to each other, to each other here, we are far greater. We have His power. His power. And faith is strength of knowing. Now, I remember, and I've said this probably a hundred times, I've got to say it again. Uh, you know, during the battle um, of Ur, right? I believe uh, um, it was when Moses was up there with the, um, Aaron and her, right? And they hold him up, right? Okay, and, and I always use that one because when his arms fell down, they would be losing the battle, right? When they held him back up and they stood themselves on each side and held him up, that of course toward heaven but that term is that 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 them holding them up that term is emuna yeah. that's where we get that's the term faith and everybody thinks faith is the evidence of things not being a substance of hope for it's yes but it is in strength of knowing it is a firm belief that this will be and when you have that think of that strength in god that it gives you it's totally different. Knowing that we are connected to God and he will work out everything, even if it seems impossible, because we have that amuna. And, right? It's, and so we got, we, got, we got to listen, right? We got to listen. We got to hear. We can listen and never hear, by the way, right? You know, I mean, all sorts of stuff can go in there and just, you know. And, and then we got to walk out. We got to walk it out. We got to obey his word. Then we have to have faith, a firmness of belief that what he has said to us, that we're actually, go it's going to come to happen, right? Yes. So, um, and I'm, and I'm going to read a couple really quick here. Um, let's see here. Hebrews 11.8. By faith, Abraham was called to go out into a place which he should after receive an inheritance. After, right? He obeyed and he went out, not knowing even where he was going. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him in the same promise. Faith is a daily requirement for God's people. We are chosen to lech lecha daily, go out for ourselves, and to be a light unto the nations. How well are you at walking out your destiny for God? How good are you at listening to God, having faith and being obedient? Do you walk out your journey knowing that God is your shield? Do you have doubts? Do we, I mean, where do we place our trust? Is it in the arm? Is it in the what I can do? Chariots and horses. Or is it in, you know, what that Emuna comes from knowing that strength behind you. And um, I see the doors are already open there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. 
what I, what I want to talk to you all about is that we all have a purpose. We all have a life. This whole portion here, I mean, uh, I love if people want to stay for Midrash, there's a lot of stuff in here that's really good stuff. But I want you to know individually that this portion is about you. That this portion is about what God has planned for you. And only, you know, we were hearing prayers about, uh, about getting over diabetes. We we're getting here prayers about jobs and prayers about things. Think if we had the faith to believe that God wants to bless us in every one of those things. And we actually walked out and we had that in our heart and mind the whole time. And just, we were bold about expressing God's will for us. We were bold about saying, he plans on blessing me. You know, God, when he said he was going to make his, uh, him as numerous as the stars, he said, go out and see if you can see them. He wasn't just talking about number. He was talking about how bright they were and that they would be a light to everyone else that, he walked, uh, that, he, that they walked among. There's an old uh, Jewish tradition that says you can walk out uh, in Israel on a totally uh, dark night and you will never stumble because the stars will show you the way. You know, and they're saying that that is the people that will show you the way. Think of you, each one of you, as a light of God that is meant to show his light to other people around you, lest they stumble. So... The doors are open. We got a lot more. I'm sorry, you guys. There's, you know, just so much in here. But the big part of this is believe that God loves you, knows you, wants the best for you. And the best for you is to glorify his name. Amen. We're going to bring out light. We're going to express love. We're going to lift up people and help them. And by that, we are fulfilling God's command to us. And when we fulfill a command, he will bless us. And he will bless those around us. So anyway, I pray that you got that. I pray that it's good for you. And I pray blessings on every one of you. And God walking out his will in your life. So, All right. Well, then, it looks like Sam.